Hey there guys, welcome back. My name's Sada Plays. I hope you're all well. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a Sada story time. There's probably some of you right now going, what the hell is a Sada story time? Uh, hopefully it's quite self-explanatory. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that every now and again, I do a little story. Um, I'm gonna put some gameplay in the background. I'm not too sure what it's gonna be, but I, I didn't really know what story to tell you today, guys. And I know some of you just like chilling and listen to my voice and just having a story going on. So I thought I'd do that today. And, um, you know, maybe you could get to know me a little bit better. And uh, hopefully it's nice and relaxing. It might give you a giggle and it might take you on a little journey. And, uh, you know, everyone likes a little story, don't they? So I was thinking what story should I tell? And I'm still not 100% sure. I was thinking like of a travel story. Um, in case you don't know, I backpacked around the world, um, like mostly through Southeast Asia. I went like through Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, um, Israel, Egypt, Australia. Um, I've been around a little bit. But today I thought I'd tell you about one of the longest road trips that I've ever done. And this was after about a year and a half of traveling. Um, me and my friend called Mel, um, we act, me and Mel actually met each other in Israel um, years before. And then after that, I mean, we, we're literally just good friends. Nothing ever happened between us, uh, like my little sister. And we've been for a lot of adventures together. So anyway, we'd, this, this happened like a year and a half into our travel. Um, first of all, we landed in Bangkok in Thailand. We traveled all through Thailand, uh, through Malaysia to Singapore. Then we flew to Indonesia. We went to a few different islands in Indonesia and we ended up in Australia. We ended up at the very north of Australia in Darwin and it, when we got there, it was like really hot. I think they were having one of their heat waves. It had been like 40 degrees heat for like three weeks. And it was quite a shock going from Asia to Australia. Like everything was really expensive. I can remember we, um, as soon as we got there, we, we bought a meal, just something to eat. And we worked out that for the price of that one meal, would have been a week's worth of accommodation in Indo in Indonesia. So it was pretty, quite a big culture shock. So anyway, we wanted to travel around Australia and see all the things, you know, that all the tourists do. And one day we're walking along the street in Darwin, a super, super hot day, and we're walking down the road. And then we saw this sign at the side of the road, like a chalk sign that somebody had written. And it said, would you like to drive a relocation vehicle to Perth? And in case you guys don't know, from Darwin to Perth is the whole left-hand side of Australia. I'm not too sure how many miles it is, but apparently it's three and a half times the length of Great Britain. So it's quite a long way. Much, much longer than what we thought it was. Like, put it that way. We thought, ah, oh, we'll drive that in a few days. Oh, no. We had a big old adventure. So, anyway, we we went into the place where this sign was. And there was this little porter cabin thing there with these guys sitting in there. And we talked to the guys. And they was like, oh, yeah, what it is, is somebody had driven this vehicle from Perth to Darwin. And we need somebody to deliver it back to Perth. And I think it, I can't remember how much it cost to do it, but it was so much cheaper than flying or taking the train or anything like that. And we thought it'd be a bit of an adventure. So we thought, why not? Let's just do it. Actually, I don't even think it was my idea. I think it was Mel's idea, but anyway. So if you live in Australia, you might recognize what uh, vehicle we were driving. It was called a Ford Falcon, and it was a four-liter, like, van thing, like a small little van. So it had two seats in the front, and then it had, like, the back of it was like a, a van, just enough to 
have two people laying in it. But the whole of the back of the vehicle, what was in the back was filled with uh, camping equipment, um, cooking equipment, uh, just all the stuff what you'd need for that journey. Water bottle, you know, like massive big jerry cans, water bottles, all that sort of thing. So we thought, ah, oh, bugger it. Let's, let's, let's do this. So anyway, long story short, we, we got in the vehicle and we started our journey. And boy, oh boy, we did not realize how flipping far that was going to be. It was, it was, oh my God, it was crazy. So we started off our adventure <clears throat> and um, I can't really remember the exact details, but all I can remember from parts of the journey, which we never have, I've never seen this before in England or in any other country. I, I mean, maybe you guys would have experienced this if you live in um, America or somewhere that's got massive wide open spaces, but I'd never been in such big open spaces as the, you know, some of the journey going down to Perth. And all I can remember is the sky seems so big. I know that sounds weird, but what it was is because you could see there was nothing in the way. You know, when, when we started our journey, you could literally see the curvature of the earth. Like there was just straight roads for as far as you could see. And it just disappeared into like a mirage, like right in the distance. And then as far as you could see behind you was exactly the same. And just this massive sky over it, you know. I don't know, it was really weird, like a massive open space. So we started off our journey and we, we stopped off at, I can't remember the name of, there's some national park there, Kilaguli or something like that. Uh, it was absolutely beautiful waterfalls and lakes and we stopped there in the first couple of days and then we carried on going down we got to a place called uh, coral coral reef I think it was um, and there you're we supposed to be able to see whales and stuff we never did see any whales and the water was bloody freezing we went in there but most of the time we were just driving we would drive in at like 70 miles an hour all day constantly and we hardly ever saw any other traffic uh, we very rarely saw anywhere to stop it was just a long road right in front of us and a long road right behind us and every now and again we'd like stop and just get out and it was so silent everywhere you looked, there was like this spin effect stuff like this spiky grass and like this red sand and we would saw like dust devils like little tornadoes and things were on our way and it was it was crazy i've got some really cool pictures um i wish i could add them to the video but um they're like real pictures not digital um so anyway we're um we're driving along we're driving along like a week goes past and we're driving along and we'd just stop in and sleeping in the back of the van. We'd like unload all the stuff out of the back of the van into the front of the van and we'd just sleep in the back of the van. And like Mel was paranoid about snakes coming in through the windows and all this sort of thing. But anyway, the only food we had to eat was pasta and steak. Like we'd stop off and uh, we had like a cooler and we'd get steak, but mostly it was pasta and steak. And I don't know if you've ever just eaten pasta and steak every single day and then just sat down and driven every single day. But let's just say your poop, well, it doesn't come. It's literally, you are so constipated. Like, holy shit. I reckon I didn't poop for, I don't even know, it felt like weeks. But uh, I can remember like going to, try, <laughs> I can remember like trying to go to the toilet and just going, oh my God. God, it literally feels like I've just got a load of bricks inside me. Anyway, that's not here nor there. So anyway, we're um, we're constipated. <laughs> we're driving along, and one day we stopped at it was some little service place. It was like a it, there was a billabong there, like a little bit of water and like a little 
cafe thing. It was in the middle of nowhere, like literally as far as you could see one way, as far as you could see the other way, nothing. Just this little place. Um, and we could camp there. But what I really, what I, what I still don't really understand about Australia is there was this billabong there, okay? And it's just this little like lake thing full of water, Re like not that big. And there were signs everywhere saying there was crocodiles in there. And like I'm English, we we don't have crocodiles in England. And I just I used, always thought to myself, how the fuck did crocodiles get in there in the first place? We are th like literally hundreds and hundreds of miles away from anything. How did these crocodiles get in that water? Like, I don't know. So I almost didn't believe that there were crocodiles in there. I mean, you know, why would there be signs if there wasn't? So anyway, one night I'm I'm fishing I'm fishing in this billabong. I've got like a little rod with me. I put a bit of bread on the hook and I'm fishing there. And I'm sitting right near the edge of the water. And the water's like dark and murky and, you know, I just didn't think nothing of it. And this guy was walking his dog and he walked past me and he lit like he just said to me so like matter of factly, he was like, Is our oh, mate, I wouldn't sit that close to the water, like it's getting dark and the crocs could have you. And I was just like, What? What? And instantly in my mind just popped in. Have you seen Crocodile Dundee? where the girl goes down to fill her water bottle and the crocodile comes out and grabs the the water bottle thing around her neck and drags her in the water. I, my God, like as soon as he said that to me and he said it to me so like flippantly, I just instantly pictured that and just got so fucking scared. And like just, I moved right back away from the water. I was like, oh shit, like... Am I crazy? Like, I just had visions of, like, these crocodiles creeping up on me and were going to grab me. Apparently, people that have camped there before me, their dogs had been taken by crocodiles. The crocodiles had burst out the water and, like, you know, took the dog and eaten it. So, anyway, I was like, whoa, that's a bit spooky. And I said to Mel, I was like, bloody hell. Like, this Australian guy just warned me not to sit near the water at night, you know, like, as it was getting dark because there's crocodiles. And she was like, oh, yeah, you know, there are crocodiles here. So anyway, the next day, we stayed there like two days. The next day, there was this bridge that went over part of the billabong, like the road went over this billabong. And I'm sitting, I didn't want to go near the water because obviously the crocodiles. So I'm sitting on top of this bridge with like maybe a 30-foot drop down to the billabong and I'm fishing off of it. And I've just, you know, I've got a flow and all that. So I'm fishing there. And I don't know if you guys know what a road train is. It's a huge big fucking truck or lorry. And when I say huge, it's like a normal truck, but like maybe three or four of them in a row. They're at, it's like, a, it's a road train. It's like a train, but it's a truck. It's absolutely insane. When they go around, if you follow one, if you're driving behind one, when they go around corners, the back wheels smoke. Like all, like they, they kind of slide sort of thing. I don't know. It's, they're absolutely insane. So anyway, I'm fishing away on top of this bridge and I've bought my favourite fishing float with me. And I've, I've got it next to me and I'm just about to change the float to carry on fishing when this road train comes past me and the wind off of it blew my float off of the bridge and down into this billabong and I'm like no like without that float I I can't really fish anymore and like, I can't get another float anywhere and I, like I know this is stupid but I thought ah, it's only in the shallow water down there. Like, I'll just quickly go down there and grab it. So, anyway, <laughs> I'll quickly go down where, where there's crocodiles. So, anyway, I walked down from the bridge and I started walking down this slope towards the actual billabong, towards the water. And there was these signs up saying, like, 
do not go near the water. There's saltwater crocodiles, um, you know, like proper like pictures of a crocodile, like danger and all this. And I was like, well, I don't see any crocodiles. So like, if I just quickly grab it and go. So as I'm walking down this muddy slope, and I could see my float just floating in like about a foot of water. I'm walking down there, and behind me, I start to hear this. <clears throat> and I'm just like, what the f Like, I didn't realize crocodiles make noises. Um, and I could hear different tones of this noise all around me. Some of them were like, <clears throat> some of them were like, <clears throat> and I'm hearing like three or four different tones, and I can't see shit. I don't see any sign of a crocodile around me. I mean, I, I definitely wasn't my stomach rumbling, that's for sure. So anyway, I, me being just stupid, I run down, quickly grab my float, and then just run back up and like f got back onto the bridge, and I'm like, fuck, like. I wonder if they were crocodiles or not. Like, I'm not sure. And then as I look down into the water from the bridge, what I thought were logs floating in the water when I first went down there was the back of crocodiles. There was literally like four or five of these crocodiles just float like just with the tip of their back out of the water. So I was like, oh, fucking hell. So anyway, I didn't get eaten by crocodiles there. It's all good. And then later on, actually, we went to a a crocodile sanctuary thing, and there was an 18-foot crocodile that had been found near that area where we was. It had one of its feet, like, cut off. So, like, it had had a fight, and one of its legs had been bitten off. And 18-foot think about how big that is like it's that's probably longer than the room that you're sitting in right now absolutely insane so anyway didn't get eaten by the crocodile we're all good so anyway next day we get in our vehicle we carry on driving we're going along we're going along and uh everything seems cool and then as we're driving along this long 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 road with the big sky all around us in the distance, like right in the distance, I could see this cloud which reached from like one side of the sky to the other. And this is a beautiful hot day. It's like, you know, 35 degrees, beautiful hot day. But there's this weird dark black cloud in the air. And I'm like, is that a storm? That, like, that's so weird. So anyway, like, we're driving along and we're getting closer and closer to this cloud. And then as we got closer to it, I could see that the cloud was, like, spread out. Like, and it was almost moving. And we were like, what the fuck is this? When we got closer we started to realize exactly what it was. It was a swarm of locusts, millions of them. As we got closer and closer to it, the whole of the floor was covered in dead locusts. The whole of the, like, there wasn't, we were driving along and they were all hitting the windscreen and everything. There wasn't an inch of the air around us that didn't have one of these locusts in. It was... It was one of the most mental things I've ever, ever seen in my life. So, of course, me being me, I thought, I want to get out and take a picture <laughs> in, in amongst all these locusts. I knew they wouldn't bite me or anything. But the Mel, who I was with, was actually having a panic attack. She was sitting there going, <laughs> and I was like, Mel, I said, I'm just going to get out the car I'll wind down the window and just take a picture through the window of me standing in these locusts. I've actually got the picture. It's pretty cool. Um, so she's having this panic attack, shaking, holding the camera. <laughs> and I was like, look, it's all good. One of the most amazing things, I got out of the vehicle that we was in 
and I stood in amongst these millions and millions of locusts, like with my arms out wide, and not one of the locusts bumped into me. Not one. They all like flew around me. It was just the most, I don't know, absolutely insane. I, I doubt I'll ever see anything like that ever in my life again. It, it was one of the most insane things I've ever seen. Like seeing this big back big black cloud in the sky and then realizing they're actual like animals and apparently these locusts there's so many of them they can literally destroy like acres of farmland like you know the crops like in in seconds they can just land and devour everything and then move on so anyway we'd we'd seen that with this huge big cloud of locusts so right we carry on driving we carry on driving and maybe I don't know, maybe it was a week later. This whole journey, by the way, took us three and a half weeks. And we're doing like 70 miles an hour a day, just driving. And when you're, when you're on the road that you can see as far as you can see in front of you, as far as you can see behind you, and it, sometimes it feels as if you're not moving. It literally feels like you're on a, a roller and you're just going, and you're not getting anywhere. It's such a peculiar thing. So anyway, we, we carry on driving, and about a week later, we start to smell this, like, beautiful smell in the air. Like, it literally was like somebody had squirted perfume into the car. And we was like, what? Like, all around us, it's just like desert, and like spin effects, and like... And we just couldn't work out what this absolutely beautiful smell was. And we carried on driving and the smell was getting more and more and like really, really strong, all coming in through the vents of the vehicle. And then in the distance, we could just see for as far as your eye could see, all everywhere, like all around us, colors where once it was like sand but now it's like just colors and it, it was just like what the fuck like what is going on anyway I carried on driving and it turns out that I th it only ha I mean I might be wrong here uh, if there's any Australians correct me but apparently it only happens for two weeks in the year and it's when they first get a little bit of rain, these wildflowers come out. And, like, we were so privileged. They're just these tiny, tiny little flowers, but they carpeted miles around us, like miles. And um, it was just literally the most insane like, you know, all these things are happening to us. The crocodiles, the bloody locusts, and then just all these crazy flowers that have just popped up out of nowhere. And like, I don't know, it was absolutely magical to see these wildflowers. And the smell of them was insane. So we'd, we'd seen the crocodiles, we'd, we'd been all through the locusts, we'd seen all these things, all the flowers and all that, and we're getting close to um, Perth. So we carried on driving, like another week goes by and we're sleeping in the thing every night and we're scared of snakes and all that sort of thing. And uh, finally, we end up, like we've literally been in the middle of nowhere all this time. And then finally in the distance, we start seeing high rises and buildings and stuff like that. And uh, we'd reached Perth. It took us three and a half weeks to get there and probably one of the most i've never done a road trip in my life before and um it was crazy it was absolutely an amazing way of seeing australia and it was brilliant and so i got him we got to perth and by the way perth is the most isolated city in the world one side of it you've got something called the nullarbor which is desert and i think nullarbor in um, Aboriginal means no trees. It's literally just a desert to one side of Perth and to the other side of Perth is just the sea and then Indonesia. It's like the most isolated city in the world. So anyway, we got to Perth. I got a job 
in a restaurant there. I was washing up and they all called me a dish pig. I didn't really know what a dish pig was, but apparently it's someone who washes up. And um, yeah, there's my. We, I got to Perth all the way from Darwin and uh, we got a job and we lived there for seven months. We actually lived next to the the mayor of Claremont. Like he, I don't know, it was so weird. But um, yeah, I absolutely loved it. So there you go, guys. There's my little story about my <laughs> about my journey from Darwin to Perth and some of the things we experienced on the way. I don't know if you're into this sort of thing, me telling you a little story and taking you on a little journey with me, but um, I thought I'd do it anyway. Let me know if you do like this sort of thing and uh, I'll do some more for you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope you did enjoy it and uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening, guys.